Hello everyone, today I'm going to show you how to make these wire work stars and you can use them for loads of different things. I'm just going to show you the basic technique and this is the big one that I'm going to show you. So you can either use this as a pendant, make a nice piece of jewelry like that or just a decoration to whether to hang on your tree or on your window or anywhere else. So a nice kind of like a northern star like this and I'm going to show you how to do this one. So basically show you the basic technique of it where you can then also make some simpler versions. So these ones are just turned into earrings, just using some different materials to make them a bit more delicate. But like I said, you can make lots of different variations of this, just using that basic technique that I'm going to show you. So, if you want to learn how to do these, then keep watching. So these are the few things that we're going to need. Now I have two gauges of wire here, and they're both regular round wire, and I'm just working with a silver coated wire here. So the first gauge is the thickest gauge. So this is going to kind of be the structure. This is a 1 mil. Now you can use this, you can also use something like a 0.8 mil. It really depends what you can use it for and also, I would also say how large you want your piece to be. So if you want a smaller one, then by all means use 0.8, that's going to work out better. If you want a bigger one, maybe a pendant size, you might want to use a 1 mil. But then here we have a 0.4 mil. We're going to use that to gently wrap at the end and also add the bead in. And as for the bead, the one that I'm using here is a round and it's a silver stardust bead. And this is just an 8mm one. But you can always use whatever kind of bead that you want to. So let's get it together and let's get started. So first of all we just need to cut a length of wire ready. And what I have here is about 70cm of my 1mm wire. Now again, how long you need it to be, it really depends on what you're making. How large you want your final piece to be. But this is what I'm going to be working with. So then the main tool that I'm going to be using to make this is a pair of flat nose pliers. So you can use this or some chain nose pliers, either one will work fine. And then we need to start from one end of our wire here. So what you just want to make sure to do is also make sure it's nice and straight. So you want to make sure there's no kinks. And ideally as well, we need to work with straight wire. Obviously it's going to bend along the way. We just need to straighten it out as we go. Because we're working with straight pieces here. So, working towards one end here, I'm going to start about maybe five centimeters down from the wire where the end is and we need to make our very first bend so I just put my pliers on the wire there and then I bend my wire against the pliers to get the first angle in so something like that to begin with and we can always adjust it because the first thing we're doing now is this long tail that we left is going to kind of be the top of the piece or the star and then we're working our way around as we go so if you can see this is the top part and then the first one we need to go in and make is the first short one so you can see the long ones are kind of every 90 degrees there at angles and then we also have a long one in between that's 45 degrees but then the short ones need to be in between those 45 degree angles so that's the first short one that we're doing now then we also want to just tighten up the angle here to get it just right and this is kind of something you can do by eye you can obviously have something to refer to next to you that you can measure it against but you can also just do it by eye so get your angle nicely in place until you think it looks just right a little bit more so like that and then we need to get the first length in place as well so to do this Again, you can either have something next to you, like a ruler, where you can actually measure against it. If you want to be absolutely sure to get them the same length, because obviously you want it to be even all the way around. You can also do it by eye if you feel comfortable with that. But then if you were to measure it against something, you want it, the short ones to be about one centimeter, just to make it easy to work with. And then you just want to place your pliers where just before the one centimetre point on the ruler. So you can do it this way, grab hold of it, and then with this first one what we need to do is we need to bend this, it's a bit like if you're making prongs for prong setting, if you're familiar with that, we need to bend this back on itself, so around the pliers here, towards the back, and get your long tail with you as well, keep hold of it and then just keep bending it all the way back on itself until the long tail is lying right below the short one so you can see them there they're doubling up 
And then we need to squeeze this flat, so the very tip, instead of having that space. So I put the very end there, towards the bottom of my pliers, you're going to have more control that way. And then you just want to start squeezing this gently. So the very tip here, or the whole length really, the two wires are going to end up lying flat next to each other. So it's just like when you're creating a prong as well. And then you can always just squeeze them flat if they kind of overlap a little bit to make sure they lie straight. So they now lie right next to each other, nice and tight. But from the front there you can see it looks like we just have the one wire because they're on top of each other. So that's the first short length. And we can always keep adjusting the angles as we go. So now we need to move on to make the next one. So to do that, this is then the long one we need to go in and start making. I want to put my pliers back in right at the bottom there till they can't go any further. Then keep hold of that. And then again I need to bend this long tail against my pliers with the same angle in between. So take it out and then we can just have a look at it. So something like that so you can see we're working our way down to the next one. And you can just tighten up the angle if you need to. So this one is now the one we want to want a 45 degree angle from the original one. But you can just look at the angles between each other there, so compare them. So I want the next angle to be about the same size as the first one. So something like this. Now this one is one of the longer ones. So again, you can either do it by eye or you can decide how long you want them and then measure against something. It's completely up to you. So the last one was one centimeter, the short one. So these ones can say make, to start from bottom there, we'll make them about one and a half, I think. Again, it all depends how large you want yours to be. That's completely up to you. So put your pliers in. And then in this case, on the short one, we went and bent the wire around the back. Now what we want to do here is take the long end and bend it around to the front because that way we get kind of the same level throughout otherwise we'll keep building. If we keep bending the same way it's going to get a little bit wonky. So in this case I'm going to keep hold with my pliers and then bend the long tail here around the front of the pliers but back on itself still. So it's going to lie on the top of the previous wire that we have just like this and again you can see we have it open from the side so we do the same thing just squeeze it down to get that kind of prong if we're making prong setting and as you're squeezing it you can see sometimes you can have this happen but that's why you just go in from the side press the wires flat next to each other instead and just adjust it that way and then squeeze it down the very tip there until you're happy with how tight it is so you don't really have any spacing. So that's the very next one. Just make sure it's coming down so from the top here, from the front, you can't see wires next to each other because they're on top of each other so that's when it looks right. And then we just want to continue like this basically. So again put your pliers all the way down from where you just were so they won't go any further and then take your long tail and bend it outward against the pliers up for the next angle and to make the next short length again we can tighten it up and then make sure your angles are looking nice and correct so it's as even as possible so I just need to tighten it up a little bit more here Again, just compare it to the previous angles. Now this is in the point where you can either continue just measuring it by eye, because then this one, what you would compare this to, is compare it against the short one that you made previously. So I could just go in like this. And always, when you're making these kind of prongs, taking into account, when you bend your wire, that adds another one to two millimeters for the length that you're making. So you just want to start your pliers just a little bit further down. 
but also like before you could just get your ruler out if you wanted to be exactly the same with no kind of chance of them being uneven and measure it if you want to so do the one centimeter for the short length and then bend it and then because this is the short one this one we want it to bend behind like that and it doesn't really matter whether it's the short or the long ones you're bending behind or in front that's not really the point it's more of remembering it's every other one you're bending the opposite way so because the first one I bent behind the second one I then bent towards the front this third one I then bending behind that's really the principle and again it's open so we just need to close this down, make sure they're flat next to each other while you're squeezing, be nice and gentle about it, just keep adjusting them if you need to, until it comes back down, and again from the front here you can't see the wire because they're lying on top of each other. So that's the next one, the next short one. So we need to go back out and make the next long one. And that's the one that's then going to create the 90 degree angle from the top there. So same principle, put your pliers in, bend your wire against your pliers, and then just have this come straight out to the side compared to that top one there. And you see that one just needs to be opened up a little bit and tighten up this angle. So something like that. Same principle. We need to then get the right length. And now this one is then comparing to the longest one. So every other one is long and every other one is short. So like I said, how long you want to make them is completely up to you because that's what's going to determine how large your final piece is going to be. And then because the last one we bent behind, now we need to bend this one towards the front. And there we go. And then squeeze it down. And it can slip like that and that's fine, you just want to correct it. So there we go. And then have a look before you move on, if you're happy with the angles, if they're a little bit off, you're better off adjusting them now because then that will make the rest easier and that will also end up then fitting towards the end because we need the whole thing to become one piece at, piece at the end so like that and you just want to continue doing this working your way around and you're going to find that you get this kind of gap in the middle that forms naturally which we're going to fill in with the bead we just keep doing this until you get back up to the top so I've now kept going all the way around here, as you can see, alternating the short and the long, the short and the long. And then also because we alternate it in going behind and then in front, you can see it's nice and flat as well. And it's not curving out of shape or anything because of that. And then we've ended up here at the top, so the long tail that I've been working with is now coming up the same direction as the original tail that we left. And these two are also going to slot in perfectly together because the short one there is going to fit perfectly on top of the one we've been working with. So they're going to end up lying on top of each other as well and just blend in with the look of the rest of it. But you can see obviously this is open so this is still loose. So that's when now the 0.4mm wire comes in. So we need to do a length of this and it could be anything about 40 to 50 centimeters. It doesn't have to be that much, just enough to be comfortable to work with. So I take my 0.4mm wire here and I want to start a little bit down, so maybe 10 to 15 centimeters in from the end. And then I'm going to grab my star and then just start working on one side here. So basically the very first angle that we made, I'm going to start with that. So I'm not going to close this up just yet. So just put that around the front and then in between that very first, in that very first angle that you made. And then push the rest of it up through the middle there. Because what I want to just do first is connect the inner part on the one side here, working our way down towards the bottom tip and then also that's when we're going to then add in the bead but we're going to do this first wrap around come up through again and then we have two wraps there on each of the inner points 
So where the wire is curving towards the inside, creating that kind of almost circle shape. I do that twice on each one. Come up through the middle again. And I just make sure that every wrap that I do is lying next to each other so they're not crossing over. But now what I want to do is move over to the next angle. So I just come up in, in the middle there, go down through the next angle. So we went down through the first one there, now we're moving to the next one. Again, up through the middle. Pull it all the way through. And then around here. And this is just helping making it more sturdy. The whole piece together. Because obviously all this is one length of wire that's kind of crossing over. So all these kind of prongs that we've made could come apart. But that's what this is going to help prevent makes it much more sturdy but then also blend in nicely with how we're going to add in the bead up through the middle move on to the next angle make sure that your wire is not crossing over just like that and go through to the next angle there and then just continue like this until you go reach the bottom point there so straight across the other side from where you have your two ends. So now I've kept going, so my weaving wire here that I've been working with has ended up towards the bottom of the piece, so my two tails are basically opposite each other now. It looks like that. So this is the point where I want to add on my bead. So what I'm going to do is get that out, and then I take one length of wire, coming from the top there, get that through first, whatever bead you're using, and then I take the weaving wire from the bottom part, so the opposite, and I want to go through the bead in the opposite direction, like that. So we then can pull both ends, and as we're pulling them, that takes the bead down towards the middle there, and it's going to sit it right in the middle, with both wires crossing as well in between, so that's through the bead, so that's going to make it more secure. So now basically the wires are switched place what's bottom and top. But then we just want to continue here. So we can either just continue from the bottom first, or we can go up and kind of seal up this in place. So there might be an idea to do that just to make it a bit more secure. So this length that's coming out from the bead now towards the top, just get that around first, around the side you've already wrapped around once or twice, just to get it a bit secured. And then I want to wrap the two tails together here. So it might be an idea to kind of hold on to them. Because you want them to sit on top of each other like this. So from the side they're next to each other, but from the front they're on top of each other. And make sure they stay like this as you're wrapping around them, just a couple of times. So when you're wrapping this, make sure again that your wraps are as nice and tight as possible. Because it's going to blend in nicely then, It'll be nice and seamless. Just do this a couple of times to secure them in place. And then once you're happy with that and you feel they can obviously still move up and down if you kind of force them to, but they are secure now. So what we can then do is continue wrapping around the other side to make sure the whole piece stays secure, but then also that the whole thing blends in with each other. And to do that we just need to keep wrapping the same way that I showed you on this side so the only difference is we now have the bead in the middle so it's a little bit there's less space to work with but you just want to go towards the end of your wire then come up still through the middle but just on this side of the bead so there's still space there and then just continue wrapping around within each angle there twice working your way down twice around the first one, come up between again and then go over to the next one and wrap around twice. And just continue like this until you also want to start doing that down here maybe towards the middle of the side there with both of them because you don't want to wrap this all the way down to the bottom because we need to finish off the wires here. I'm just going to come down through with the short one on the bottom to then be able to come up and you just want to start with the bare one that you haven't wrapped yet. 
And like I said, you want to wrap them both towards the middle of this side so we can finish them off nicely. So once you've got both of your weaving wires here, where they kind of meet in the middle there, but wrapping around each their own angle, then the way to finish them off is simply just by cutting them off. Now I'm using a pair of flush cutters here. It's nice so you can really get in there and cut it off so you're not going to have any excess sticking out. I'm going to cut off right close to where it's wrapping around and then I'm just going to take some chain nose pliers and just help squeeze down the end. And I like to squeeze it down and then make a little roll with my wrist in the direction that the wire is going because that really tucks it in and gets it out of the way. Same thing with the other one. Cut it off right close to where it's come in with the last wrap. Get your chain nose pliers, squeeze down the very end, and then just do a little roll so it's nice and tucked in. And then you can just run your finger over it, make sure you can't feel it, so it's not going to catch on anything either. So this is basically the basic star with a bead in there as well, and it's nice and sparkly, just like a star. So the last thing to do is just finish off the tops here. So for that I'm going to get my flat nose pliers again and then we want to first of all finish off the wires but also make something so we can hang it from it. Whether we want to use it for whether it's a pendant or decoration. So basically what I want to do is this is, I'm treating this as long as the, one of the long ones here all around. So I want to place my flat nose pliers roughly where the end of that would be. So if you have a look again you can measure it if you want to. We do something like this, and then this is in from the side. We have the long tail left, that's the back one. I want to bend that down against the pliers at an angle, so from the front it's coming out like this. And then basically I'm going to put my pliers back in to just to keep hold of the wires so they stay in place. Then I want to start forcing this wire from the back going around the front here to then just basically wrap around the other one that's still going straight up. And that's how we're going to finish this one off but also secure it so it's going to be more secure and not move around too much with the ends here. So as you can see there, wrap this all the way around. It's coming back towards the back again. Make sure it's as nice and tight as possible around that other one mill wire something like this, have a look from the front, make sure it still looks right that the wires are on top of each other from the front but then from the side that they're next to each other until we have that wrap there. Then once you have it, it's just fine enough to do it once and once it's coming towards the back again there you can just help squeeze it in. But then at the back I'm then going to cut it off so we can get rid of the excess like that. And then always make sure to just squeeze down, whenever you cut off wire, just squeeze down the very end so that's not going to be sticking out. So that's one now. So the other one here I'm going to use to just make a bit of a wrap loop. So again I'm going to take my flat nose or chain nose pliers, place them in. I like to again put it to the side and then place that in there. And then I'm going to bend my wire against the pliers again to the side just like that, or to the front, it really depends how you want it to hang if you want the loop to be, so you can see it from the front, then do it this way you can also have the loop the other way, that's completely up to you I'm going to do it that way and then get my, I'm going to use my six step bell making pliers you can use round nose pliers put whatever size loop you want right at that angle you've made, bend it back on itself around your pliers here to make a loop so it's going to look something like that and then we want to just I like to then take some flat nose pliers and hold onto the loop there and then bend the rest of this tail around underneath the loop as you can see I have my end is a little bit short here you can just take some other pliers if you need to and help guide your wire all the way around and again you can also squeeze which gently helps your wire get in place all the way around there. So that little space you had originally from where you made the bend to start this loop, we're now filling in by using this wire 
and that's how we're then making the wrap loop. So it's just a matter of that very end of your wire. If it's longer then obviously just bend it around. And it's the same principle, the very end you want to make sure to squeeze that down so you don't have it sticking out and maybe catching on something or scratching or just being in the way really. So that's in the wrap loop and then that's what it looks like from the front. And you have your loop at the top where you can see then you kind of completed a full star there so it looks nice. So this is what we've then ended up with. So a final star there with our bead in the middle makes it nice and sparkly. And then like I said you can use this for anything, it'd make a nice pendant, especially this size as well, and you'll notice it. But you could also use it for say Christmas decorations and have loads of them say on the tree or hanging somewhere else maybe from the window. So it's completely up to you what you want to do with it. You just use this loop attached, whether it's jump rings to a chain or just maybe some ribbon or cord through it, that's completely up to you. But then this is just one variation really, so the technique you can use in many different ways. So like I showed you earlier, that's like the pendant or decoration type one. And then I also made some smaller ones here, which I thought would be perfect for earrings. So this is the one where then I use one mil wire for this, these ones are then use 0.8 mil wire. And I didn't do any wrapping with a weaving wire, because they're holding well enough on their own because they are so small. You don't need to do more than this. And just put them on some earring findings. So make nice and cute earrings as well if you want to. And then just have loads of them. You can make a whole starry night if you want to as well. <laughs> so that's what they look like. So quite a nice and simple technique and you can do so many variations. So I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial and thank you very much for watching. Hello there everyone. Today I want to show you how to make these wire work hat earrings with arrows running through them. And this is what they look like. So they hang nicely like this, from the center point of the hat, so they hang nicely from your ear. But then this is the piece, how it looks, and I just added a bit of a wrapped link to it with some gemstones on. Because actually I've made these as part of a set. So the original pendant that I made was this.